This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitballing Podcast. We here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballing Podcast. We know, we know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming and you have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast by our very own Sloopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be sh- some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from some uh, from someone who has grown up around the game, as well as someone who is brand new to the game. Again, that is Spitballin Pat- Podcast. There's no G at the end. Spitballin. Available at your favorite podcast streaming device, wherever you may find it. What is up, YouTube? What is up, Discord? We're going to have some fun today. I'm not tired. I didn't spend the last 48 hours doing yard work. It's fine. I slept somewhere in there. Everything's fine. I'm not tired at all. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Anyone who says otherwise is a communist. There. I said it. By the way, Gangland, I, I saw the, the funny little animation that the USFL did for first down markers. It's not the same thing. Because the ball is static in that situation. But they're not using it to determine if they got the first down or not. All that's doing is replacing the chain guys coming onto the field. It's not determining live action. The spot of the ball is still being spotted by a human this isn't fixing any problems other than not forcing the the chain gang to walk on the field that's the only thing it solved you know where it is on the field in relation to the marker when the ball is static and not moving that is way easier to accomplish that is super easy to accomplish All right, Jared, we do have actually a lot to talk about, so let's, right. let's jump right into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Coughing. Just that one, though. <laughs> Probably got been digging. Probably got dirt or something in my lungs. It's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't ask why I was digging. I wasn't doing anything illegal, and you can't, you can't prove that I was. You can't prove that I was, Kyle. All right. I wasn't going to worry anyways. Gangland says. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you're, 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 you're a chaotic good like me. We don't do. Kyle's one of those boring lawful goods. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. Gangland. If I if I was doing a hydroponic farm, I wouldn't be digging in dirt outside. The hydroponic farm in my basement would mean I was a not outside and two not using dirt. Come on now, man. Come on now. All right, Jared. All right. Today's episode, we will be <laughs> doing an early depth chart prediction the spring camp behind us um i think it's better than ever better it is a good time now to do an early prediction here of what we think the offense and defense will be this is our second one uh, by the way this is the second time we've taken uh taken this upon ourselves um this time it's going to be done with a lot more intelligence yes <laughs> we at, le- we at yep. least have we at least have spring camp behind us I said more gangland. I didn't say a lot. I just said yeah. more. So, so with that, there are there are a few things that has happened since the last time that we've chalked, chalked, talked. Uh, Did you were uh, you going for one. chatted and talked at the same time? Maybe uh, probably a big one here. Noah Potter, Noah Potter entering the uh, transfer portal. Uh, yeah, definitely a guy. Definitely a guy I really liked. Uh, There's um, during, during during the recruiting. Um, part um mm-hmm. and then coming in as a freshman i really thought noah potter was going to be 
going to be really good at Ohio State. Just it didn't pan out that well. Injuries and all that wow. too. And with what is ahead of him on that defensive end here, yeah, it would have been yeah. tough for him to see the field much this this season. Yeah, and like to say injuries isn't even sufficient. He had medical issues, and you know they they were talking about moving him inside. I think they they had him practicing this year as like a three tech defensive tackle. But that's like out of the frying pan into the fire as far as the depth goes. Like Ohio State's defensive line is very deep. And Noah Potter, for reasons that are out of everybody's control, lost a lot of developmental time. Uh, And he he probably just lost up ground he wasn't going to make back. And he just decided to go find opportunities elsewhere. And that's that's great. That's what the transfer portal is for. Um, he probably would have got some snaps this year, but I, you know, he's going to get a lot more snaps somewhere else and that's, that's great for him. And I wish him nothing but the best. Yep. And because he is part of the, uh, the pandemic year, he still has three years of eligibility left. So wherever he decides to go to, he, he has, he has that extra year there. Yep. Okay, Kyle. Uh, uh, anything else? Well, there, there, were, there, there were a couple other things real quick here, Jared. Um, yeah, yeah. Former Ohio State, uh, Bryson Shaw. Looks like he's going to USC now. I He plays like an Oklahoma safety. That's the meanest thing I've <laughs> ever said about an Ohio State player who, who, and who then, plays football. <laughs> and then a last, last thing, and we're not going to spend too much time here uh, discussing here, but a we got a transfer for basketball for Ohio State and that is uh, Sean McNeil a transfer out of West Virginia he's a guard definitely <laughs> guards definitely one of those positions Ohio State really needed last year someone who can really handle the ball and um, yeah never really had that true true point guard yeah uh, last year but um, yeah he's a senior so he'll have that one year at Ohio State here but yeah definitely welcome uh, yeah, basically Maitland, a trade for Arndt. Say... No, because no, Arndt is more of like a shooting guard. He, he just, forward. you just. Shooting forward. He was more of like a shooting guard. <laughs> well, he, okay. I mean. Because sure. a forward actually goes towards <laughs> the basket. Yeah. And without the guard. Oh, yeah. You, that's sorry. That's what you said. Without the shooting this year. See, now I'm being mean yeah. again, damn it. Stop making me right. be mean, everybody. Kyle, we need to get right. to this depth chart prediction. Yep. Let's get into it. So offense. Let's start with the offense here. We're just going to go down the le- list here. And yes, Jared, I did paste it into the notes so you can look at it. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is Kyle's. Uh, so we're doing, uh, t- we, we record two episodes at a time. That's not a secret. Kyle uh, did the depth chart prediction. And I did the recruiting class prediction, which will be our Tuesday episode. Uh, so we, we sort of traded off here, uh, and then we're going to react to each other's classes or my, he's going to react to my mock class. I'm going to react to his depth. We got chart. it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> Quit over explaining right. everything, Jared. So, Shut the right. hell up. All right. Starting off here, Jared, to no surprise here, CJ Stroud, Kyle McCord, Devin Brown in that order yeah. for your quarterbacks. No surprise. <laughs> moving on to running backs. Again, no surprise, Henderson, Williams, sure. and Pryor. You, um, f- as far now, as like the game against Notre Dame week one, yes. yes. Man, it's going to be hard to keep Evan Pryor off the field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. But starting By the off... way, I, I saw people trying to drum up like, oh, is there a battle for quarterback two? No, there's not. It's Kyle McCord. Shut up. No, just stop. Just stop. Stop it. It's, uh, it is a very clear one, two, three in the quarterback room. Yes. All right. Could you see Crowley the, we, seeking other places? We, we don't like to. We yep. don't like to predict transfers. No, but I will say. Jared, but, but note that with, I didn't say. That I didn't say yeah. no. <laughs> with Noah Potter transferring out, Ohio State is at eighty-six. With the. Um, Where we've I was, not seen the end of the post-spring exodus. They'll, no, they'll have no. scholarships left over for walk-ons. It, mm-hmm. It'll be fine. All right. Wide receivers here. Uh, let's kind of go down the list here. Uh, so I have 
three wide receivers. You have your X, your Z, and your Y, or your slot receiver. Uh, the X receiver, I have I have your starter as Marvin Harrison Jr. The Y, or the slot receiver, I have uh, JSN. Mm-hmm. And then the Z, I have Emeka Abuka. Now... Now I have I have um probably your fourth receiver is probably going to be Fleming and then and then Ballard and then Grace in there. Um I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about that if I'm being super honest with you Kyle. Um All right. the I think the issues I'm having Hold on, let me Let me pull something up real quick. The. I, I think I don't know. I, like, I, I like Gray's. Um, I don't know if I see him in the top six right now. Um, there's Bab if he's able to remain healthy. Xavier Johnson, you know, I, I mentioned that there were some upperclassmen. There'll be scholarships left over for uh, upperclassmen. I think Xavier Johnson is a. Uh, is definitely a name to watch as far as like a, you know, fall camp scholarship goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, The trying to find a file. I'm sorry. I can't find it. I'm not doing a very good job of finding stuff in the moment. Um, Sorry. Uh, Yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard time with the wide receiver spot. Yeah, um, like it's... yeah, Z- Xavier. Jo- yeah, Xavier Johnson. I think definitely can be there for in the same grouping. The X receiver too with like Z- with um with Marvin Harrison Jr. I-, I can see that as well too. Um, but yeah, it's. I I, I really feel comfortable with with those your 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 top four there. Jason in the slot. Harrison Jr. at the X, and then Ibuka out, out in the Z, and then Fleming could pretty much kind of fill in any from there, too, if need be. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like Emeka would, if anything happens, I think they move Ameka, uh, to JSN. I think Emeka feels very at home in the slot, which I think would leave, you know, a lot of the other guys are more dedicated outside wide receivers. So, the problem is they have too many wide receivers and not enough places to start them, which is always a thing. I, when people are like, you know, two running backs, three tight ends, whatever. It's like, yeah, you're trying to, you're taking all these talented wide receivers off the field when you do stuff like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with the wide receivers as far as who's going to get the nod. I think a lot of these, I think most of the guys you mentioned are going to get a lot of catches, especially Harrison, Ballard, JSN, Fleming, and Abuka. Like, I think those guys are going to get lots of targets, lots of catches. Um, and I think they'll, I I really don't even know how dedicated they're going to be as far as who plays where, to be honest with you. Like, that's one of the things I'm struggling with, because I feel like you're going to see JSN play outside and inside. I feel like you're going to see Emeka Abuka play inside and outside. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um I depends on the play probably yet. I, I feel like well, this is well, one let's of those not forget situ- too. Let's let's not forget too, like JSN doesn't necessarily have to play in the slot. I know that's where he's gonna feel most comfortable, but you could probably see him going out to one of the other um positions there too, and they could open the open the door to to um maybe Ballard or Fleming coming in sneaking in there JSN- for a couple of plays too. Yeah, JSN could easily play the X position. And, you know, you do that, which means, you know, you could maybe move. I I, I kind of also think maybe Ballard's more of a Z. Um, might might be one of the other issues I have with this depth chart, Kyle. Um, I almost see a, Be- uh, a Mecha Abuka as like the backup X and the backup slot with Harrison and JSN being the starters in that spot. Um, Mm -hmm. and then Julian Fleming and Jaden Ballard sharing time at Z. Um, Okay. 
but I don't know. Like I, I feel like I feel like this there's gonna be a lot of movement. But I think we've already yeah. spent a lot of time on this. So we should probably <laughs> move forward. Right. Um tight ends. The tight end here, Jared, with uh it this is a really interesting year. Uh the door is wide open for a lot of the tight ends here. Uh I have I have Stover mm-hmm. as your starter. And then I have um and then I have Rossi and then your and then Royer as your backups. G Scott? G Scott's yeah, Scott's back there too. I, I think he needs He had the most catches in him, the spring game. Give him, give him more time and maybe throughout the year Scott can move up in that list. But as of right now, as we're recording this here, I Scott just needs more time. I think just give him more time. I think it's I think it's totally package dependent. Uh tight end really just feels like a flex. Like the the tight end just feels like a and other. Like I don't know. Like it's it's just I don't I don't know like if if you need a fullback out or I mean you tight end out there who's actually a fullback, then you probably have Mitch Rossi out there. Stover I really think Royer is going to come on late because I, I don't know if anyone other than Royer can do it all. I, I think Stover's a blocker. Rossi's a fullback. And I, Mecca's a pass catcher. Royer is young and inexperienced. But I think he's the guy who has the most potential to, by the end of the year, be the most complete yeah. tight end. Now, that might yeah. be, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. But that's kind of what Ohio State's done at tight end forever. Yeah. Yeah. True. All right. Uh, I don't think there's any debate here for your starting offensive lineman. Uh, starting left to right here, left tackle, Paris. Johnson Jr., Donovan Jackson, Luke Whippler, Matt Jones, and Dewan Jones at right tackle. Yeah, no, that's that's set in stone and, pretty yeah. much there. Yeah, the now, yeah, absolutely. Now now the question, Jared, mm-hmm. who's the backups? <laughs> who's well, the backup? I, I, I would uh, say well, I can, we know I, who the backup center and guard is. Yep. And that's uh Jacob James at center and then Enoch uh, Vimahi as your backup guards, <laughs> whatever guard is available. Yeah. I think he's definitely your first in. And I also say if anything were to happen, well, Kyle, won't you go ahead and tell me who you have your, as your backup tackle. And the backup tackle. I have, I have Zen. I have Zen out there. Uh, Mikalski. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I would, but. S- but I would say if anything were to happen, especially Vamahi. Yeah, Vamahi is not only the backup guard, which he is, but he's your first in. He's your first guy in if something were to happen. Let's let's say worst case scenario. Yeah, this is what Paris Johnson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr. goes out, throw in Donovan Jackson out to left tackle, and then put um Enoch there at left guard then. Absolutely. Which is the same thing we saw them do with Paris Johnson Jr. last year, right? So yep. it's 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 just that same thing. I think your backup tackle is is actually Donovan Jackson. The way Paris Johnson Jr. was actually the backup tackle last year. And then you just you put Vamahi in. Vamahi, I think, is the first offensive lineman to come in unless it's the center, in which case it's it's uh, Jacob James. Well, Munford was. What do you mean? Well, that well, oh, that depended upon the side. Gangland on the right side, it was Paris Johnson. On the left side, it was Munford. But yeah, I, I understand what you mean now. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle. Uh, that is the- our offense. Um. Offensive, we got through the offensive line real quick. I think that's a pretty easy <laughs> go. I think we know who the five wide receivers are for sure. Um, where they'll be playing, I think will be a thing that they shuffle all year. 
Tight end's a bit of a mess, but we knew that already. Uh, running backs are all great, and the quarterback is every bit as set in stone as the offensive line. Yep. All right, Jared. Before we go to the defense, I think I think it's now a good, good time to take a quick ad break for our, our sponsor, Sleepcast Austin, in his podcast called The Spitballing Podcast. That's right. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitballing Podcast. Uh, we are actually thrilled. We are thrilled to be talking uh, about some baseball with our new sponsors, which is like the most thrilled Kyle and I have ever been about baseball since Ken Griffey Jr. played for the uh, Seattle Mariners. Uh, we know uh, what we give you. Uh, we know we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage uh, in the Ohio State world, but baseball is currently in full bloom. And if you're looking for a new uh, MLB podcast, I highly suggest the Spitballin Podcast. There's no G on that. The Spitballin Podcast. Um, take a listen. Our very own Sloop Cat Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there'll be tons of shenanigans, but there'll also be unbiased MLB coverage uh, from someone who has grown up around the game, as well as someone who's a little bit brand new to the game. So... With that, uh, you can find the Spitballin. Again, there's no G on there. It's a Spitballin podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and uh, wherever you're wherever you're listening to this, probably. I don't know if he's on YouTube, but outside of that, wherever you're listening to this, you can also find the Spitballin podcast. All right, defense, Jared. I'm going to talk about the defense. All right. Well, first and foremost, Kyle we're, we're going to start, we're going to start the defense off with some fireworks here because I don't agree. <laughs> you don't agree. Now you go, please start us off. You, you got to put, you got to put JTT in there. JTT has mm-hmm. got to be one of your defensive ends. Mm-hmm. And I, I struggled on who the other side is. I struggled who the other side is. I'm, my no, my heart my heart says Zach Harrison. My heart says Zach Harrison. But my but my head says uh Jack Sawyer as the other side. So we, we have we have two different defensive ends we need to talk about here. We have sort of our speed defensive end, then we have more of our uh anchor defensive end. I, I think and again, I really don't I think the start is pretty ceremonial and doesn't matter a lot cuz all four of the guys Kyle mentioned are going to get plenty of snaps this year. So, let's let's just say right off the top that who actually starts is mostly ceremonial. It doesn't really matter. Lots of all four of these guys are going to get lots of snaps. There's going to be a heavy rotation here. So, and the fourth guy means, is John Baptiste. Sorry, did you not actually say that? I did um, not. All right. <laughs> I think that Zach Harrison is the guy who comes out first and foremost at your speed rushing defensive end. And I think backing him up will be Jack Sawyer. And on the other side, you know, that might be JTT. It really might be. Uh, I, I, I might give you that side. Uh, but Javante Jean Baptiste, uh, whether he starts or not, again, doesn't really matter. But I think your your anchor defensive ends will be uh, absolutely. I'll call, okay, you know I'll give you JTT. JTT and backing him up will be Javante Jean Baptiste. Okay, and then and then you're. But I really think they're t- going to let Zach Harrison at least start you, again. Maybe even if it's ceremonial, because there'll be lots of rotation. Yeah. Both guys will play. I think Zach Harrison's going to start on the speed And then side. your your fifth your fifth guy to come in would be I have in here as Tyler Friday. I agree. That, that I think that's your your fifth defensive end. All right. Your three tech defensive tackle, your three tech uh Vincent and then Williams backing backing him up. I I agree. Yeah, I don't I really like I really like our three tech um, um I I, re- I really I really like what I'm really looking forward to seeing um the uh Vincent and Williams this year. I, I think I think it, they're gonna do really well. I, I mean I, I didn't want to get into it again because we literally just had this fight. Um I, it might be the other way around, but also it doesn't matter. 
They mm. might they might give the nod, the ceremonial well, start to the older so, guy, like Kyle has in the depth chart here. But both it, guys are going to play. Both guys are going to get plenty of snaps. I'm not too worried about again the ceremonial start. Yeah, and the same same thing with your your one tech or your nose tackle, Ty Hamilton and um and uh, Drawn Cage too. Which one which one's going to start? Which one's not? I might have an issue with this one, Kyle. All right, go for it. You name four defensive tackles. Um, you should have at the very least added a fifth. Uh, as we're going to, we're going to get some, some Mike Hall love this year. Uh, I don't think okay. they're going to keep him off of the field anymore. Uh, I, I think he has, I think his time has come. Um, I, I think it's his time. Yeah. I, th- I mean, I, I think it's his time. Um, big defensive tackle, highly recruited, uh, Ohio kid. Mike Hall's going to play this year. Just tossing okay. that out there. I, I think he probably steals Cage's spot. But regardless of how he gets on the field, I think he gets on the field. Um, and almost kind of leaning that way, by the way, as far as, and I don't know how deep they're going to go with the defensive end rotation. As far as like n- Tyler Friday. Can can Tyler Friday hold off Caden Curry? Because I really feel like Caden Curry, even though he's a he's a freshman, um, I I have a hard time seeing Caden Curry not getting some snaps this year. Okay. All right, linebackers. Linebackers is going to be really different this year with the new defensive scheme being more of a four-two-five style. But I still put in a strong linebacker in here, even even if we may rarely see a strong linebacker position here. But I've yeah. added it in here in the um, depth chart anyway. So yeah, how many side, starting how many starting positions do we? Because <laughs> like yeah. we have, yeah. So so the weeks that weeks that I have as your starter, uh, Steel Chambers, and then backing him up is Cody Simon. And then for your I, for your middle linebacker, based on what I've we've seen in the spring camp and how well the coaches, um, or especially Knowles, has liked him in the spring, I'm giving the uh, the nod to Eichenberg at middle linebacker. N- maybe Cody Simon can go in there. Maybe um, Mitchell will get some time too. But I'm sure. going to give the early nod to Eichenberg. I do think that at least for week one, let's, let's, let's reemphasize that for week one. I do think those are pro if, you know, if we're talking about four linebackers rotating their way onto the field, I think it's those, those four, um, CJ Hicks and Gabe powers. However, they're, (laughs) they're, they're not going to sit back and wait, wait their turn. As I said, I want guys who steal spots. I've said this before. I'll say it again. I want guys who steal spots and I, Hicks and, and also powers, but probably more so Hicks. They're not going to sit back and wait. I, I think you could very well see both of those guys stealing reps at linebacker before the end of the season. Now, again, we're talking when we're doing this depth chart, we're, we're talking about like week one depth chart. So from that perspective, Kyle, I agree. Um, all right. My only thing is that I, I still kind of think of Cody Simon more as a middle linebacker, but uh, with this new scheme, who the hell knows? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who who is a middle linebacker? You got you have two linebackers. <laughs> well, because kind of the the strong safety slash bullet slash bandit whatever the we're calling it is kind of the the other linebacker. Well, well, I guess we'll, we'll cover that one then here as as that position. Yeah, exactly, Gangland, just smaller. Yeah, maybe this this one is your group of like ransom and um, the incoming transfer McAllister as well too. Uh, I mean, I've heard I've heard great things from McAllister so far, and him being familiar with Knowles. Um, 
defensive scheme here. You may you may give the nod to this him is here. The cover safety. Yeah, the co- the cover safety slash whatever you're going to call. Well, I think the strong safe the the cover safety is more like a safety slash nickel, so it's kind of a safety corner hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think Tanner McAllister and then Cameron Martinez. I think that's I think that's yeah. solidly what it is going to be. I I mm-hmm. totally agree with that. Yeah, and then just to add in if. Ohio State runs a 4-3 defense here uh, for a strong side linebacker. I guess that's where you put in um, Pallier as yeah. well as um, Gabe Powers. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see how often they go three linebacker because, like, that that's that's the whole thing, right? Like, well, it's, when, it's two when linebackers. They play, when they play Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. When put, what happens Wisconsin when you play or Northwestern. Iowa. You know what Iowa? I mean? Like, yeah. you didn't. At Oklahoma State, you didn't see a whole lot of multiple tight end, incredibly talented, multiple tight end sets. Yep. And something like that might necessitate a traditional 4-3 look as opposed to the 4-2 look. And I think it'll be interesting to see what happens in that in that situation. Um, I'll be honest with you, Kyle. I, I almost more expect them to... I, I think Cody Simon's the... I think Chambers, Eichenberg, and Simon are the three guys, and I think they'll just figure out who is playing what position after that. Fair enough. Yeah. You're starting you're starting corners, Burke and Brown. No debate there. Um, as long as Brown is healthy, yeah. Um I, I think yeah. I think so. Um and then and then, Han- and and then well, Hancock and is your, and then Hancock is your chat as your third, as your third, uh, corner coming in. And then uh, your fourth corner, I, I put, um, uh, uh Ja'Kalen Johnson. Yeah. I, I think that's, I think that's right. I think if worse comes to worse, if injuries or whatever happens, I think they're very ready to move Cam Martinez back over to corner. That's naturally his position. Um, I yep. think, I think that that would be an easy thing to figure out, to move, to, to, to do, um, if you just look at the cornerbacks on the depth chart, just as a traditional, they look real thin right now, but they look real thin right now in large part because, um, yeah, ransom would not be my first option to move to cover corner gangland. Um, but, uh, let's see if I, if I had to move one of the safeties over, um, I would all I would almost look at Tanner McAllister. I think I'd move over to corner first in that situation potentially, but I feel like they are I think they are deep enough. Um mm. I, I think that one of the good things about this system is that the the players all know what each of the other players is doing. So in a situation like that, they're a lot more prepared uh than they would have been in the past to to make switches like that um i think we we also how did we talk about the the up safety or the back safety at all yet nope oh okay nope not yet so you're i have uh josh proctor on one side and then i have ronnie hickman as your as your as your free safety yeah i'm very confused by and this is these are the reports kyle's not wrong here by any means these are the reports that they're talking about moving ronnie hickman to free safety um the quote-unquote adjuster and man i'd I'd think i'd much rather see him as the up safety like he did he was like one of the i almost said the only that's not true um we saw denzel burke play really well last year or among other guys right um he was one of the few like shining bright shining spots in the defense last year playing the bullet, which is a, the bandit, which is a strong safety and blah, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I almost feel like I'd rather have those guys switched Josh Proctor at the deep free safety 
and and Ronnie Hickman as the up safety, the bullet, the bandit, whatever, the strong safety. Um, mm -hmm. But Kyle, Kyle's not wrong here. This is what's being reported as what they're doing. Um, I just don't know how well Proctor. I think I think I think Hickman's amazing, and whatever they ask him to do, he'll be able to do it. So I'm not that concerned from that standpoint. Um, I'm more concerned for Proctor. I don't know how well he's going to do up. Um, so that would still says to me that maybe Proctor should be the free safety. But what do you, you're not going to take Hickman off the field. If that's where they're dedicated on putting Hickman, you're not going to take Hickman off the field. So you yeah. have two of your most experienced safeties at the same spot. And like, I feel like Court Williams would be, would be an amazing strong safety bullet bandit, whatever. Um, I, I think you could play that spot. No problem. Hell. I think you could very easily. I, I dare I say it. I think they could put Hicks at that spot too. Maybe not right away, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm confused by the choice to move Hickman to a deep safety, but then again, I don't make $2 million a year as a defensive coordinator, so maybe I should just <laughs> shut the hell up. <laughs> All right. Um, no surprise with the kicker and punter, Ruggles and um, Mirko. With your returners here, Jared, I really like what I saw last year from Ibuka. Uh, I, there was a couple of times I got out of my seat. I was like, oh, it seemed like they yeah. were just he was one or two break tackles away from – Finally, getting a um, a return touchdown, but um, a discussion I had with Jared earlier is how how can you um, not put in Pryor in in those situations too? I think Pryor has just as much of a capability of break wand as well. Kyle, what if they put two back? That's how, I, <laughs> that's how you get a smile out of Kyle every time. <laughs> well, now, now if we're talking about punt returns, yes. I was talking about <laughs> punt returns, yeah. Now, punt um, returns. I think a um, lot of it, Kyle, will have to do with who's not getting enough snaps on the offense. And I think Evan Pryor is a guy who you're not going to see getting enough snaps on the offense. And a lot of it will just depend upon how the actual play breakdown will go for the wide receivers. Um, mm hmm if a Buka isn't getting a ton of snaps, um, I think you probably see, I almost think like a Buka as the punt guy and prior is the kickoff guy. Um, and I, and I say that because the, I almost like a running back a little bit better at the kickoff, just because it, the way that funnels, it, it, it's a little bit more like a run play. Yeah. Um, I That's don't know. Fair. Yeah. But the problem is the kickoff in college football is nearly dead. So. Yeah, it is. That's it, Jared. That is our depth chart. Cool. Cool. Um, tell us why we're wrong. YouTube <laughs> comments, uh, Twitter. I'll see. I'll see it on Twitter eventually. Um, <laughs> I don't follow to nearly as much as I used to. And. No, don't DM me on the Discord. We have channels for these things. Post on, yeah. <laughs> just come, just come right at me in in the Ohio State football channel or the Sloop Cats only channel if you disagree. We we don't got to take this into the DMs. I mean, if you want to, go ahead. But why? Why? Oh, and by the way, this was Kyle's depth chart, so send him the DMs. <laughs> All right, I think that's it, Jared. I, I think, think that's that it. is our that's our episode here. Why don't you kick us off? Oh well, just uh, come come yell at me. I think that's what I was doing. I think that was at least my intent. If you, if you disagree, come yell at Kyle. Come yell at me in the Discord server. Uh, you can join us on Patreon. No, Gangland. It was Kyle's depth chart. Why do I have to catch all the abuse? No, that wasn't a rhetorical question. Someone tell me why I have to catch all the abuse.
Who else takes it? <laughs> Kyle! Kyle can have some. Uh, that's it, Kyle. What do you have? Why is everyone team Kyle? What do you have in uh, Kyle's corner? Uh... Oh, that was that was a desperate um. That was a that was an um of <laughs> oh shit. I I didn't have anything. That's what. That well, my was. biggest thing. My biggest thing was about the um was about basketball with um, McNeil, McNeil transferring uh, to Ohio State. Um, Towns, Towns returning also Allegedly. next year. Well, I mean, he's coming no, back. It's, it's, well, it's he... saying that he'll be, he'll, he should be back next year. He was supposed to be back this year too. Well, he, he missed, he, he had, he, he had injuries. So that's I'm, why he didn't play. I'm aware. Okay. Okay. I'm aware. Okay. All right. It's not going to be, going to be completely just change of, um, uh, this basketball team is going to be just so different than last year. So different. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Fair enough. Is that it? Is that Kyle's corner? Uh, that's it. And the crew needs to actually score goals. Well, sure. Maybe they should not trade away one of the well maybe they should he wasn't scoring all right um the he wasn't playing either well there's that <laughs> <laughs> but he but was he scoring no thank you very much all right uh tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band from cedarville ohio uh they're called wolves at the gate uh if you uh don't like heavier music be forewarned this one's about to get loud so, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Wolves at the Gate. Mm-hmm.